Hi, I'm Rob D from Property Hub here with Rob B. And today we're gonna to take you through some simple steps to get you started investing in property. Yeah, getting started in property can be quite overwhelming, but in this video, we're gonna give you the steps you need to take to get started. Okay, step one, it's pretty simple, but you need to be in a position to invest. You're gonna to have to have some money. Property investment requires funds. There may be people that tell you you can do it with no money, but if you are investing in a property, then you will need cash money to get going. So if you haven't got the funds required, you even need to start saving or work with other people to combine your funds to get going. But there is no way around it. You're going to need some money. Step two is to get clear about what you want. And that doesn't mean, do you want a flat or a house? Do you want a two bedroom or a three bedroom? No, there's much more fundamental things to think about than that. You need to think about what change you want property to make in your life. So do you want property to give you income that you can have right now so you can quit a job that you don't like? Or do you want property to support your retirement in 20 years time? Or something else entirely? Your objective will send you off in completely different directions. If you want to have a portfolio worth 10 million pounds to end up passing on to your kids, then you're gonna to need to do very different things from if you want to make an extra 200 pounds a month, say. Until you get clear on that, you can't target which type of properties you should be buying, which we'll cover in a future step. The third step is build your knowledge. The more you know about property investment, the better decisions you're gonna make. Now, the great thing is, the knowledge is out there for free. For a start, Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We give you loads of knowledge at no cost. And then we've got the Property Podcast, where there's hundreds of episodes that you can listen to to build on that knowledge. And there's so much more. Just go look for it. And there's so much more that Property Hub offers. So start taking advantage of it. So build your knowledge, because that will give you confidence and it'll set you up to be a more successful investor. But your need for knowledge doesn't end there. So step four is to continue building your knowledge, but around your responsibilities. Property investment is not something to take lightly. If you're investing in shares, for example, you're gonna end up owning a tiny piece of a company and having virtually no impact over how it runs. But in the case of property, you're investing in what's gonna become someone's home. There are certain things that you will need to do and because of that, there are certain things that you're going to have to do by law when setting up a property in the first place and when looking after that property, even if you use a letting agent to do some of the work for you. Step five, connect with those experts. So if you're gonna let your property out, start speaking to letting agents. And even if you're not gonna let it out, they've got a lot of knowledge you can mine. You can find out a lot about a local area through those local experts. You'll also want to connect with a mortgage broker. Yes, you can do a mortgage by yourself, but don't. Work with an expert, it's a bit of a minefield. Looking at a list of mortgages on a website and picking a nice rate and getting your mortgage is not the reality. There's a lot more to it. So build your power team, work with experts and work with other property investors. No, I'm not saying combine your funds, but just connect with them. You can do that via online forums or if you're a little more sociable, you can get out and meet people for free. There's lots of property investment meetups around the country that you can take advantage of. By meeting other investors, you can mine their experience and really accelerate your learning. So work with a great team and speak to other property investors. The next step is to decide on the area you're going to invest in. Now you might have expected this should have been step one, but really it does have to follow all these different steps because by this point you have more of an idea of what you want and different areas are geared towards different types of investment. So if you want to stick to investing close to home, which many investors do, there are still lots of different micro locations that offer properties that are geared more towards income or more to growth that cater towards tenants who are families versus students versus young professionals sharing with each other. There are also, let's be honest, some areas that you just absolutely want to flat out avoid. So it'll take some time doing your research and talking to your new network to decide which the right area is for you. If you're open to investing anywhere in the country, then you've got even more choices to make, which is fantastic because you'll be able to zero in on the absolute best area for your strategy. But the downside is you can easily get caught up in over analysis. So being very clear about what you want and having the network to guide you towards that area is very, very important. Step seven, start practicing analyzing deals. Do you want your first deal to be the real thing and you've got no experience? No. That's going to be quite daunting. So go on Rightmove, go on Supla and look at investment deals and start to work through the process of almost pretending to invest. Look at the yield, assess the value. Is it well priced? Is it overpriced? Or have you got yourself a bargain, even though it's an example? 
but start that process. Then work out what the rental levels will be against that property and then calculate your yield and your cash flow and what will you earn each month if you invested hypothetically in that property. By going through the motions, by the time that you start to look at deals for real, it's going to be a lot less daunting and you're going to be a lot more confident about making good decisions. So you don't have to wait till everything's in place. Start practicing now. And finally, step eight, take consistent action. Property investment is not something that you decide to do one day, you work on it for a week, then everything's done and you can stop and move on to something else. It takes time and there are going to be setbacks along the way. You're going to look at lots of properties that are going to turn out not to be suitable. You're going to put in offers that are going to be rejected. You're going to have deals fall through. You're going to have mortgage offers fall through. It's very easy to get deterred and it's very different to fall down during any one of the previous seven stages because you're not putting in effort consistently. So if becoming a property investor is something that's important to you, then great, set yourself a goal and that goal should be big enough and important enough to keep you motivated. But also set yourself at least weekly tasks, possibly even daily, to keep that consistent focus and keep you going. Property investing isn't easy. That's why the vast majority of people who want to become a property investor end up not becoming a property investor. But by taking that action consistently and overcoming the hurdles, you will become a property investor and you'll start to reap the rewards. Right, there you go. You're a beginner no more. You've got a list of actions you can be taking. Yep, and one final action you can take right now is subscribe to this channel so you can keep on learning.